Yes, my bundle of love family at last. I'm so sorry it's taken me uh, this long to get this episode out. I've actually invested in uh, some new equipment, but um, there were some technical hiccups. And how do we put it? I guess some incompatibility with the bloody equipment that I bought. So it kind of set me back. So deepest apologies for the delay in getting this uh, episode up and running for you. But the main thing is, better late than never, we are back for another episode and delighted to be back connecting with our lovely audience, uh, wherever you happen to be listening to us. My name is Febzi Hussein, and you are listening to a podcast with a difference. We don't hold back, and I know I say this a lot, uh, but we really don't, and we're certainly not scared to say what needs to be said, particularly when we have such a useless government in power and a prime minister who is blatantly taking the piss out of the great British public. I'm going to spend a fair amount of time in this episode dissecting the untruths of our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his Conservative Party. But before I go into uh, doing that, I want to have a brief recap of our last uh, episode because we got a lot of feedback on that. Um, and I want to start with a, a reminder um, and the heart wrenching story of Ali and his family, who are Syrian refugees, you'll remember. Uh, they're currently holed up in a UNHCR centre, refugee centre in Lebanon. I hope listeners have been uh, taking the baton to the UN. And for those on Twitter, please send that message to at refugees, which is the Twitter handle for the UNHCR. Uh, I'm still in contact with Ali's family and the situation is still unchanged. We don't expect things to, to change um, so soon. They are desperate. It sickens me that some journalists deliberately stoke up hatred against these vulnerable people. Uh, bear with me a moment. Um, my granddad, God rest his soul, he was a private in the British Army. He was in the Cyprus Regiment. He was extremely proud to fight um, with a British Army uniform on his back. For his trouble, he was captured by the Nazis and spent over two years as a POW in a prisoner camp in, in Berlin. He's probably looking down uh, from wherever he is um, and looking down at the simmering hatred which is constantly fueled by the utter, I think Peter Stefanovic uses the phrase bollocks, um, and untruths of certain political commentators who frankly should know better. I honestly believe that if a world war broke out, um, perish that fought, uh, God forbid, you know, but if, if we were, um, in that situation and there was a call by the Queen for the Commonwealth states to fight in the name of the Queen to save the crown I believe that that call will fall on deaf ears indeed on the back of issues like the, the Windrush scandal the rise of Islamophobia um, all of the bombing that we're seeing, the disproportionate stop and search, who in their right minds would take this call up, I ask you. So you can see how easily I can get distracted. I try not to, but 
I think it's a, a relevant point to make. So I was talking about Ali and his family, and I would urge all of our listeners to apply the pressure on the UNHCR as we collectively seek to highlight the plight of uh, Syrian refugees in Lebanon uh, and indeed um, wider uh, and beyond that. So apparently Nigel Farage and co are suggesting that next year there will be 60,000 refugees coming to the UK via the English Channel. Good luck to them, I say. What we should be doing is ensuring they have a, a safe passage. Uh, but some of us seem quite content to see these refugees drown. Um, it's, it's just an appalling situation and uh, it's terrible that people can and can wish these on, on these vulnerable people. So this episode is, is called The Prime Minister and His Untruths. Some would say that we have a Prime Minister in Boris Johnson who makes Walter Mitty look like Pope John Paul. I know the vast majority of people who listen to this podcast are likely to be socialists at heart who care passionately for the environment. For our listeners abroad, I'm going to have a massive whinge about the state of British politics, but that's not nothing new, I hear you say. It's because I've got to keep on banging that bloody drum because things are getting worse and worse here in the United Kingdom um, with this you know, shit show of a, a government. Um, I know most political leaders are uh, egotistical, testosterone-driven, narcissistic bellends. But every now and again, you get a leader who is genuine and cares about people, nothing else. Just as simple as that statement that I've just made. Cue people like Jeremy Corbyn and Bernie Sanders. Now, that would have been a, a brilliant transatlantic trade deal for the people, not for the corporations. But alas, uh, it, it wasn't to be. And many would say we are, you know, we're ruining the, the cost of that now. We're getting back to Boris again. Uh, this is a man that oozes being an odious fatberg. I don't use that phrase lightly. Uh, his relationship with large parts of the public is now so toxic. Indeed, the, there was a prime minister's questions today, and it's, it's actually watching him when he's questioned, when the other politicians from the other parties are trying to hold this man to account. Um, the smirking, the, uh, just the grin, um, is, is quite sickening. Um, I, it, it makes me so angry to see that we, we have a man who is supposedly a prime minister treating the, the public with such contempt. Uh, I honestly believe that this is a prime minister who does not give a shit about what uh, people think of him. Um, we had a, a, a Tory MP actually defect today um, and come over to the Labour Party. Um, I and the Labour Party uh, were obviously making a lot of capital out of this. Personally, I don't see it as a, a major thing, partic particularly for what this individual um, has stood for, his voting record. I don't think it's something particularly that Labour should be celebrating, if I'm being perfectly honest, but hey-ho, um, I guess a, a win's a win for them. Um, in a recent interview that Boris had with the, the broadcasters, uh, when he was challenged about the flat refurbishment, which is another issue that just will not go away, um, it was a small matter of about £110,000 uh, 107,000 sterling for our overseas listeners. Um, but that he got a mate to pay for. So not only was he blatantly evasive on the question, he simply kept 
saying what he did was within the ministerial code and at the same time he had that ridiculous smirk going on which was effectively sticking two fingers up to those who are trying to to get some accountability um, in play here. Uh, I'm not um, anti-vax by any means. Um, you know, I think I, I respect people's views, um, but uh, I've had my two vaccinations and my booster. I shielded for months on end, and now the politicians are effectively saying that everything is okay. At least that is the signal being interpreted by many people. And Boris has also pretty much announced that any restrictions are now going to be lifted apart from the wearing of masks on transport. Now, like I said, this is uh, given a, a really bad signal uh, to, to the people. I don't think the infection rate's going down. You know, for the people of the UK, come on, over 150,000 people have now died. I have friends and family who have died from COVID. Most recently, just a fortnight ago, a cousin of mine uh, passed away from this awful virus. And I come back to that question around the track and trace and the issue of the £37 billion pounds, um, that we paid, which incidentally, a similar system cost Germany just over £800 million pounds to set up. So if I said to you, sit down and count from one to 37 billion, counting like this, one, two, three, four, etc. Without sleeping, without having a break for food, etc. Do you know how long this would take you? Can we have any appreciation for just how big this, this number is? Um, all right, never mind counting to 37 billion. If I ask you to count to just 1 billion, I say just 1 billion. Did you know that it would take you about 30 years without any breaks for food and sleep to count to 1 billion? 30 years. So imagine 37 billion pounds, how big that number is. How much money has been wasted? Why isn't there more people challenging this? Why is it that apart from a handful of brilliant, persistent journalists. Most journalists appear too scared to ask the questions that we want to be asked, that we want to hear the answers to. When it comes to energy, the public will soon be finding out that their gas and electricity bills are going to go up even more. When that price cap is lifted in April, we are likely to see more steep increases to our energy bills. Other countries have been taking steps to help um, the consumers. Uh, but so far, this government has done pretty much nothing. There's a lot of talk, um, but, you know, Action speaks louder than words, Rishi Sunak, and your actions have been non-existent on this. So again, earlier this week, um, it was in the previous Prime Minister's questions, Boris Johnson told the world that effectively everyone would be better off by £140 per week on their energy bills. He repeated this claim in the same debate. Of course, for those lucky enough to qualify for this payment, it's actually a one-off payment for the whole year of £140. Boris, it isn't a weekly 
payment. You of all people, being the Prime Minister, should know this, you idiot. Um, you really would think a Prime Minister would know this. Um, but unfortunately, I think this falls into the bracket of um, being yet uh, more lies, because, you know, to say it once was um, a, a bad mistake, but to say it twice is, is really um, not, not good enough. So I still can't get over that 37 billion of pounds of taxpayers' money um, that we've pretty much, or that the government have pretty much Harry monked up the wall. And I don't think that's, uh, that's gonna, that story is going to go away because, you know, when we look at all of the issues, uh, the, the crisis around resourcing, you know, whether it's the NHS, whether it's housing, whether it's education, um, that is money that could have plugged some massive gaps. Um, but the government have chose to dish it out to contracts to friends. Um, so anyway, listen, again, uh, linked to, to Boris. Um, do you remember the Dunblane massacre? It's, um, it's almost 25 uh, years, or just over 25 years. It will be this March uh, on um, where we where we will we'll remember the 17 people who were cold, bloodily murdered by Mr. Thomas Hamilton. Um, he shot 15 other uh, people as well, injuring them before he turned the gun on himself. A certain journalist at the time wrote in response to these tragic events. It went as follows. Nanny is confiscating their toys. It is like one of those vast Indian programs of compulsory vasectomy which was a reaction to the new gun laws introduced by John Major's uh, then Conservative government. Do you know who the journalist in question was who, who made this um, comment? It's none other than the current Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Uh, the quote has been fact-checked and it first appeared in The Telegraph, uh, I understand. And it then resurfaced in the Calgary Herald, which is one of the Canadian um, papers. Um, I think it's safe to say that the Prime Minister, he didn't really have any class back then. And he's been consistent in his role as PM now. Don't you just fucking hate it when the phone goes, when you're trying to record um, a podcast. Um, you're on the f oh, it's about one in the morning as well. Um, anyway, bear with me. That phone will stop ringing about now. There you go. <laughs> so the New Statesman, um, which is another paper, it wrote that the Prime Minister's failure to protect care homes cost in the region of 20,000 Live, so we're touching on, on the pandemic issue now again. Um, when the pandemic first took hold in March 2019, his delay to lockdown is estimated to have cost 20,000 lives. Um, that the article in question by the statesman is the fatal decisions of Boris Johnson, the lies around the Christmas parties the decoration of his flat um, are quite frankly the latest in a long line. Um, and I would have thought the role of the prime minister needed to be carried out by someone who looked and acted the part, not someone who is an embarrassment to the United Kingdom. Um, even one of his own MPs today um, pleaded with him to resign. Um, it's 
it must be uncomfortable uh, viewing for for the conservatives to see their leader being called out for such for being a liar and I think the word charlatan has been used and many other phrases which doesn't really show him in uh, a good light. Um, I think in terms of the party, Boris has now admitted that he was at the party on May the 20th, not last year, the year before. Um, although he bizarrely refers to it as a work meeting. Um, and we've seen that become the butt of um, some quite humorous jokes. Except it's not funny, is it? When we look back and we see how we were behaving when we couldn't be with uh, loved ones. Um, it really isn't funny. I try to remain as professional as I can when I speak about the Tories and their party leader. Um, it would be easy for me to label them uh, as a bunch of heartless fuckers, but it wouldn't be professional of me, so I won't. <laughs> Um, at the last count, apparently the parties uh, that have been reported, the ones that have been leaked, number 37, 37 parties when the rest of the country was in lockdown or some other restriction. I can feel a bit of a apple crumble moment coming. <laughs> 